it kind of hit me all of a sudden that I was missing dance. I was missing my structure. I felt kind of, kind of empty. And I pretty much just kind of like went into a dark hole. I fully got depression. Um, like I was kind of, I was just moving through my day, kind of like a zombie. Like I woke up, I went to college, I commuted, so I went, I came home, like I did my homework, I trained people, but I was just moving like a robot, you know? I wasn't actually yeah. like happy. I again sat down with my mom, like thank, thank God for her. She was helping me so much through this. And she's like, well, why don't you not think about personal training? Why don't you just learn how to heal yourself through a healthy lifestyle? If She's like, that's what helped me. You know, if you want to teach people to live a healthy lifestyle, to personal train, do all that, like you need to believe it and you need to live that lifestyle. Welcome to the Behind the Fitness Podcast where we interview the world's most motivating and successful fitness trainers, instructors, and coaches to inspire people to be their very best every day. Thanks for joining me today. I'm your host, Ted James. Now let's get going. Today's guest is a professional dancer and fitness coach. She has starred on television series like Dance Moms, in Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition. I want to welcome Tessa Renee. Hello. We're really going to get to know Tessa and understand how to feel our best physically and emotionally through fitness, mindset, and nutrition. But before that, Tessa, can you tell us something that you believe can make you successful in health or fitness that many people might disagree with? Now, that's a great question to start. A little bit unique. You know, everyone thinks that you have to be so strict, and I say the key to being successful in health and fitness and just feeling your absolute best is actually lacking extreme structure. You need to be able to be flexible. You don't need to be so strict. I believe that you should have a healthy lifestyle to feel your absolute best, both mentally and physically. And I think having too strong of a structure, being too strict actually causes negative effects to that, you know, because then you start getting in your head and, you know, you have one bad meal, you ruin it all. You think that the world's ending. You're like, oh my God, I ruined everything. I have to give up. No, you just need to be flexible, understand and realize that this is to have a healthy lifestyle, to feel your best. And there's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be weird days, days where you're not feeling it. And you need to just trust the process, be consistent and give yourself some leeway and not be so strict. And I think that's one thing that really prevents a lot of people from having the successes that they want when it comes to health and fitness. I know that it really prevented me for a long time because I just had that all or nothing mentality and it caused me to give up so frequently. So that is what I think a lot of people in the fitness world would not say because it sounds like you have to be so strict and everything like that. And I think that you need to give yourself some leeway, flexibility, and just trust the process and learn to listen to your body. Yes, I, I think that's very true because um, it cre- create burnout and uh, people oh, yeah. can give up. Exactly. People, it's... You just you get so strict and all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I just ruined something. And then it's kind of just goes downhill from there. I experienced it. I saw, I see it with so many of my clients and it's like, no, we're in it for the long haul. We got to learn how to adapt and just be with it, make it a part of our lifestyle. Yes. Yeah. And I, I even, I mean, I'm guilty of this too, getting all pumped up and excited for this, you know, this month. I mean, it's, it's February now, but we just went through January and that's when you see it a lot where people they're going to get strict. They're going to get serious. They're really excited. And then a couple weeks in, it, it's not always like giving into bad things. It's sometimes it's, you realize it's a grind. It can be a grind a little bit or, or not even a grind, but like it, a discipline or it, it's mm-hmm. a long haul thing. And it's yeah, not exactly. all getting pumped up and excited yeah. all the time. Cause you can't be pumped up and excited 24 yeah. 7 for the rest of your life well, i mean that'd be amazing some people are that right <laughs> and yeah don't get me wrong of course structure is important and, and you know you have to be disciplined and everything but it's just when you go that 
like that bit too far. You know, people are going to get sick. If you have children, your children might get sick. Um, someone has to come home from school early. Um, you know, whatever it is, you get called into work. Things are going to happen and you just have to learn how to adapt rather than just being like, okay, if I don't do this exactly right now, this proper way, it's all or nothing. Like you have to just be like, okay, in it for the long haul, just like you said. Yes. You said getting sick and... I think that is when I've got knocked off my routine Oh, so many times. 100%. Or you're just like having a down day or something. You're just like, eh, whatever. And the next thing you know, you pull it into a whole week and you're like, why did I do that to myself? Right, right. And then you got to get back on the routine. Yeah. Sometimes that's the hardest part. Yeah, what I always say, I use as an analogy for my clients, and again, I used it for myself for a little bit, like think about when we're all young, when we're little, you know, seven, whatever. We don't think about these things, like we just want to go play outside, if we do sports, we just go do our sports, whatever. We eat what we want, we do what we want, we sleep, whatever, it's just, we do our thing, and we we never think twice about it, we just move on. You know, you wake up, and it's the next day, you're like, oh, I go to soccer, such as that, whatever. You don't think, like, you as adults now, we're like, oh, my God, yesterday, I missed my workout, and I <laughs> ate pizza. It's like, oh, my gosh. It's like, come on, brain, just keep pushing forward. And then you stress yourself out, and uh, yeah. it, it's even worse. <laughs> yeah, it's like we just need that child child mentality. Just keep, keep going. <laughs> no overthinking like we do as adults, or at least I know I'm I like that. Really guilty of it. I, I think we all are. <laughs> all right. Well, um, can you give me a little bit more background on yourself and then tell us what drove you to find your love for fitness and nutrition in the beginning where, where your personal fitness journey started off? Yeah, I would love to. So I am from a family of four brothers. I have two older brothers, two younger. I'm the only girl. And pretty much my mom was just so excited to have a daughter. And she was like, this little girl is going to dance because I want her in a tutu never got like never thought anything more of it just was like she'll look cute in the tutu so she put me into gymnastics and dance when I was three you know just like the little fun classes and I ended up loving dance I took to it and then all of a sudden they had much more than a little girl running around in a tutu was like my thing I did it every day Um, As I grew up, I started taking it really seriously professionally and you know I was getting jobs everything such as that and um, it, that started young, you know, I want to say like around 12. And I'm not going to say I'm the typical story where you hear um, kids, you know, start booking jobs when they're young and they get burned out. But at the back of my head, there was just always this, I love dance so much. But as I started growing up 14-ish, there's something in the back of my head and I was like, I want something a little different. I, I knew I loved dance, but it wasn't the life I want. It wasn't the lifestyle I wanted. It wasn't entirely there it wasn't the rest of my life like a lot of my friends and colleagues and people you know made it much easier I wish I was like that but um in the back of my head there's always fitness my mom was super active my brothers were all gymnasts like I was just surrounded by so much physical activity and fitness and it was always in the back of my head I was like I really like that like I love the idea of teaching people to have to feel their best and everything such as that so it's just kind of though like on the back burner whatever So I ended up graduating high school Um, at age 16. I was able to do that because of doing online school and everything. I was super excited and I was like, wow, I'm done with school. This is going to be awesome. But then all of a sudden I was like, okay, what do I do now? Like you finish high school, you usually kind of leave your sports behind or you carry them into college and, or you know what you want to do, something such as that. Well, all of a sudden I was 16 and I was like, wow, like what am I supposed to do now? Do it. Does that mean I have to leave my dance studio and go to college? What is going on? So I ended up doing that and I went into college. Um, I stopped dancing at my studio. And I think, not think, I'm sure, just when I did graduate high school, I was burned out. You know, I was burned out from dance. I was driving an hour and a half to get to my studio every day. I was like, I was just burnt out. So I kind of got swept away in the whole, like, I can do whatever I want type of thing. So I was like, I'm going to be done with dance for now. Um, I was like, I want to do something else. So that was personal training. I was like, I've always had it on the back of my head. I want to start it. I got my personal training license that summer. So when I was 16, I was able to do that because 
having a high school degree, I mean, diploma allowed me to um, get my personal training license prior to the age of 18. So that already kind of got me pumped up as like, I'm one of the youngest personal trainers, like this is cool, everything like that. I got into college, Um, I kind of dwindled out of dance, but I was so busy that I just kind of didn't let myself think anything more of it. And then come like six, seven, eight months, I, it kind of hit me all of a sudden I was missing dance. I was missing my structure. I felt kind of, kind of empty. And I pretty much just kind of like went into a dark hole. I fully got depression. Um, like I was kind of, I was just moving through my day kind of like a zombie. Like I woke up, I went to college, I commuted. So I went, I came home. Like I did my homework, I trained people, but I was just moving like a robot, you know, I wasn't actually happy. So that kind of just went further and further. And I'm a very introverted person. People don't think that on social media, but in person, Mm. I, I hold to myself, keep to myself. I don't really share emotions. So that kind of just kept going and kept going. I was getting more unhappy, more unhappy. My mom finally picked up on it. I mean, she picked up on it the whole time, but I think she just wanted me to, you know, see if I could grow out of it type of thing, figure it out for myself. And there was probably like, I'd say like four months of that. And all of a sudden she was like, okay, Tessa, like we, we need to um, do something. Like you need to change something up. Like you're missing something. I can tell I want you to be happy, that type of thing. And she had suffered from depression actually at the same age as me when she was younger. So she okay. you know shared her process what made her feel better and she was like you need to find a new passion or at least she recommended i find a new passion and it took me a couple of weeks i just kind of sat on it and i thought about it and at the time i was more so at that point thinking of personal training just as work you know i'd gotten to that depressive state that i wasn't passionate about it anymore i was just working so all of a sudden, I'm like looking and I'm thinking, what's my real passion now? What's my real passion? As if it's so an easy thing to find, which it is not. But no. <laughs> I always came back to personal training. You know, people were like, you should dance again. And I was like, I don't want to. Like, I want to do something else. So what I actually ended up doing, though, was I again sat down with my mom. Like, thank, thank God for her. She was helping me so much through this. And she's like, well, why don't you not think about personal training? Why don't you just learn how to heal yourself through a healthy lifestyle if she's like that's what helped me you know if you want to teach people to live a healthy lifestyle to personal train do all that like you need to believe it and you need to live that lifestyle so I sat on that and thought about it and I was like that's 100% right so I actually at the time through dance everything I always had social media and I kind of kept posting on it, so no one knew how I was really feeling. No one knew I was depressed. I kind of just, you know, put a face on social media. So I decided, I was like, I'm going off of it. I took, I think it was about two months off, like off of social media. I actually didn't think, focus as much about work. It was towards the end of the school year, so I was having school off. It was awesome, and I just focused on healing myself. And what I found worked was overall a healthy lifestyle you know I tried everything like you know I don't know how to explain it you hmm there was no quick fix there was no one thing that was like oh I'm all better it was just I learned it was the lifestyle I was living you know it was what I was doing on a daily basis those little habits that added up and what I was feeling my body with how I was exercising my daily movement what how I was self-talking mindset stuff um journaling just those little things that I never thought more about was what actually allowed me to heal myself so I healed myself I got out of depression I mean of course it's a thing you always have but I was able to kind of crawl out of that hole and then I realized good so many of my friends so many of the people I've grown up with and on social media, when I came back, I opened up about it. They had the exact same feeling that we are, you know, after high school, figuring out what you want to do, or just something feels wrong in your life. You don't know what's going on. They had the same feeling as me. And it's so easy. You know, you're like, Oh, I'm the only one that feels like this. Like I'm out. It's just me. And then all of a sudden I had these people reaching out over social media my friends text. And I was like, wow, why do so many of us feel this way? 
And it was primarily girls my age, of course. And I realized yeah. I was like, this is what I want to do. I don't want people to feel the way I did. I want to help people and, you know, hopefully guide them out of how I felt or just overall avoid the process oh, that, that I had. That's amazing. Yeah. So that's when I jumped in and I started in-person training, online training, um, doing social media and just really focusing on teaching as many girls and boys, of course, too, but how to live a healthy lifestyle that allows you to feel your absolute best physically, mentally, and just consistency and just, again, living that lifestyle that makes you feel your best. So I know I ranted, but (laughs) my backstory, I guess it was pretty much, you know, the crazy dancer child, did it as work, everything like that, got addicted to it. Uh, It stopped it and all of a sudden kind of fell into a void, didn't know what I was doing healed myself through fitness and nutrition and a healthy lifestyle and then decided I want to teach other people how to feel this way and to avoid those dark times and hopefully I'm doing that. I think a lawnmower just turned on outside me so hopefully it'll be (laughs) more. Sorry, I definitely ran it there. (laughs) No, it's great. Um, Yeah, so I mean, I think that kind of moves into what I want to talk about next is so now that you're talking to all these different, it's mostly women, like you said, yes, um, women that, that you talk to. 18 to 25 ish. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so younger women that mm-hmm. um, possibly might have depression or just want to learn how to be happier with their bodies. Um, what, what do you say? Like, can you go into more detail about what you say to them uh, about how to yeah. get them on a path to feeling good? Yeah, exactly. So, um, I wish there was one thing I could say that, you know, made it all better. But right. the main thing is just really learning how to live a healthy lifestyle that makes you feel your absolute best. And I know I've said that a couple of times, but that's really it. What in your daily life, what in your weekly routine are you going to do that's going to allow you to feel your absolute best no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what work is going on, anything like that? For you yourself, how do you want to live? What do you want to eat? What makes you feel best? Do you want to exercise? Does it make you happy? Do you love your body? If you're not loving your body, what is it that you want to change? And is that change really something that you want? Or are you just holding on to it? Type Just those types of things of you have control of your life and you have control of your health. A lot of people don't think that they do, but majority of us really are blessed with that choice and just making that choice of how do you want to live what do you want to do and let's make it a reality and that's done through routine and the small little things that you think are going to make a difference they do make a difference it just takes a couple weeks takes a couple months it's all about routine and learning how to take grasp of your life and learn how to make yourself feel your absolute best that is powerful that (laughs) yes (laughs) it's so true you know it's so easy to get caught up in life and work, everything like that, and forget like about yourself. And the reality is when you feel good, I mean, everything in your life is going to be better. Your relationships, your work, everything like that. I am a believer of what you put out comes back to you and you need to feel good to get good. Yes. It, I think it makes it anything in your life easier to do, whether it's with your family, your work, just anything whatever your goals are, like you said, define, it sounds like you want them to define their goals first off Mm -hmm. and why they have those goals. And then, and then with routine go after it, but it just makes life and you're make kidding your goals and any part of your life so much easier when you're doing things that are healthy and you realize that it it isn't your grasp that you can do these things. Mm Mm-hmm. I, yeah, 100%. And I mean, of course, one thing I, with fitness is, of course, I know it's a physical thing. It's what you look like, everything as such as that. But I really like to dive deeper into it and holistically go about it. Because I like to say, especially for women, you know, nowadays with social media, and there's this body image, what we want, what's beautiful. And I know for a little while, I didn't like my body, especially after dance. I had this want for like that really skinny stick like kind of like model body and the reality is it's just not me 
you know, I have muscle and that's amazing. So my process that I really focus on with girls, especially, you know, especially ages 18 to 25 ish, I feel like that's a very important time is learning how to live a healthy lifestyle that makes you feel your best mentally and physically and trusting that where your body is at that is amazing and to learn how to love it and be confident and accept yourself. So that's one big thing, you know, in the fitness industry. Of course, bodybuilding, things like that's different. That's very much how you look, your weight, you know, body fat percentage. But for my girls, I want them to learn how to just feel their best. And I always say, think of it as if you're talking to a friend. If your friend comes to you and they're like, I've been eating really healthy. I've been working out. I've been getting good sleep. Like I have a really great um, group of friends around me. I'm feeling really, really good. But I don't like my stomach. Are, what are you going to say back to that person, you know? Are you going to just be like, oh, yeah, your stomach, this? Are you going to be like, that's amazing. Like, keep doing what you're doing. You feel amazing. Be confident in yourself. Be proud of yourself and accept yourself. So that's what I like to say. You know, think, okay. talk to yourself like you would a friend and also realize if you're doing everything you be- you can to feel your best, learn to love yourself at that because that's what you have. That's what you've been gifted with and enjoy it. Yeah. So <clears throat> when you're talking to these women um, about accepting themselves, what what do you think that does for stress levels? I mean, I, I got to imagine that this, after you s- realize that you can accept yourself, that's got to really cut down on stress. Do you see that? Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I still experience things, you know, it's not like I'm forever confident, always feeling amazing. But for myself and for my clients, I just see so much more happiness because they are being proud of themselves. They're proud of how they're spending their life. They're proud of what they're doing for themselves. And they learn to love who they are in the process. And it sounds very cliche and cheesy, but it's a real thing. You know, you only have yourself and to have hatred towards yourself about how you look, about what you do with your day that eats away at you. Like you said, I mean, the stress is incredible. So just learning to be like, okay, like I'm happy. I'm happy with what I'm doing. And I'm just, I'm proud of myself. That creates a whole different perspective on life. And I think, I mean, your stress levels must plummet. I know everyone I've worked with, me, myself, as soon as we start to learn that, and it's a process, there's no easy switch and it's a forever process. We're going to be going through it the rest of our life. But it's really like, oh, I have this new freedom and like this new happiness. That's what I'd like to say, I guess, freedom. That, yeah, I, that makes sense when you, you spell it out that way. Yeah. Like that. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it, like it really point, right? is it's freeing yourself from from the stress or, and hate that that you might have towards yourself. And if you can overcome that, would, and I, I don't know if you ever – anybody can ever completely overcome that just because mm-hmm. we're human but like we're you human. said it's a forever process and if you're working yeah. towards it and mindful of it then that's that's huge yeah we talk to ourselves all day long last thing we need is something else negative nipping at us all the time right. it's way at you. yeah um all right well if you could um summarize the philosophy of your fitness practice or, or fitness program as a whole. Um, what do you think that would be if you could summarize that? Yeah, so I, I've said it a couple of times and I'm gonna say it again, yeah. but learning how to live a healthy lifestyle that allows you to feel your best mentally and physically. And that's really it, you know, there's no perfect workout regimen, no perfect diet, no perfect daily routine. It's just learning how to live a lifestyle that is going to allow you to feel your absolute best through all changes in your life and just being consistent, consistent with it. That's kind of, yeah, that's how I'd summarize my um, way of training and my philosophy about healthy health and fitness. Okay. Yeah. And that is, that is so true. Well, um, I know you've already talked about uh, your depression some uh, um, in your backstory, but, um, and maybe this is this, kind of talking more about that but would you be able to tell us a moment in your life when you were at your lowest and 
how did you overcome it and what did you learn from being in that place? Yeah, so um, like I said, that it definitely was the time of depression. And mm -hmm. what got me out of it was learning that healthy lifestyle. And it's probably annoying me, annoying how I keep saying that, but it really was the truth. It was finding that daily routine, finding those little things in my life that made me feel better, that allowed me to push myself out of that dark time and get my mojo back, get my motivation back, start feeling proud of myself. And then from there, things started happening. I started running into good opportunities, work-wise, school-wise, friend-wise. As soon as I started living life for myself and learning that healthy lifestyle, I felt like good things just started coming my way. And that's how I got out of it. You know, I started with those little things, the daily habits, finding that healthy routine and just keeping it going. And I felt like it was just step by step getting out of that dark time. And it was all consistency with that. There was no easy fix, but it took time and I learned a lot from it. And that was definitely what it was. That time of depression when I was about 17, 18 years old, finding how to get out of it with myself, I was able to pull myself out and proud of myself to the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that is amazing though that you went through that and now you're, it seems like you've gone so much further to the other side because you're able to help other people in that same yeah. pro I mean, you'd never be able to help people right now the way you do unless you went through that before. Exactly. I get all the time, you know, do you wish that you just kept dancing? Do you wish you didn't finish school early? You know, take backs. And I'm like, no, I'm happy how everything went. I'm happy. I yeah. had that time where I wasn't happy because I think more people than don't, more people than those that don't. Oh my gosh, what am I trying to say? <laughs> more people than we know go through times like that. Yes. And if I can help them get out of it or avoid it, then everything I went through was definitely worth it. Yeah, and I, I think when you're in that dark time, I think you said this earlier, that you think that you're, nobody else goes through junk like this and yeah. you know, you're alone and what's the point? This, this is, especially when something happens completely by chance that mm -hmm. like even depression, you can, you can say that it was all your fault, but sometimes it, yeah. things happen in your life unexpectedly or, or, or whatever. But, um, yeah, yeah, but, but the, that's another thing. Oops, sorry, you go. Oh, I was just going to say that it's after you get through that dark time, then you get to a place and you're a different person. You learn from that experience. And then mm -hmm. like, like you now, you're able to help all these other women with that experience mm -hmm. and get through that and kind of be that person to them like your mom was to you, right? Yes. And the crazy thing to me is, I mean, I'm going to be blunt with it. I have been so grateful. Growing up, I've been so blessed, you know, with a happy home and a good life and everything like that. And the pain I felt at that time was all self-inflicted. So I can't even imagine when an outside source comes in and things really do happen. So that's when it really shocks me and is, you know, it puts a whole new perspective on it. It's like, Tessa, this, you built that inside of you. You put yourself in that own situation. This happens to people, full, fully foreign, unexpected events that cause that. And the other thing is, you know, I, I thought that you had to have some traumatic event or something to feel the way that I felt and to get depression. And when I started opening up about it, so many people were flooding in sharing their stories. And that's when I realized I was like, this is a real thing that a lot of people are experiencing and it's all in our heads and there has to be a way to kind of avoid that and make us feel better prior to it happening or just helping get the person out of it. Yeah. And this is something that I've been thinking um, about just, just recently is, is the why kind of you, you ask your clients why you want to work out, like what's, what's the goal of that? And um, mm -hmm. I kind of realized that if I can be in control of my, my physical self, 
I think I can be in control of my emotional and mental self. And at that point, mm -hmm. then I can tackle so many other things in my life. Oh, 100 percent. It's it's what did I read it somewhere and I forgot exactly what it was, but it was along those lines of when you're able to control yourself, you open up a whole new world mm. because, you know, that's the hardest part to start with. Right. <laughs> yeah. And it is a forever Literally. process. <laughs> oh, 100 percent. There's no perfect. Yes. But it's that process and like that mindset of going that makes the world of a difference. And it changes your life. It really does because it's the way you see your see your life. Yes. Well, um, this is <laughs> this is the last question that I ask everybody for the last question. Uh, if you were able to pick only one short message sent completely anonymous to every person in the world, and they would really listen and take it to heart, what would that one message be? Mm. Okay, let's see. I've got to make sure it's a good one. <laughs> um, <laughs> pressure's on. Mm -hmm. The whole world. <laughs> I would say your health is ever. Sorry. I would say a human's greatest gift is their health don't take it for granted. People dream of just having health. Don't take yours for granted. Agreed. And I think it's very easy to slip into that. And because we forget things. I mean, it's just being human. We yeah. forget things. And yeah. um, <laughs> even even now, so so last week I was getting over a cold and I was, mm -hmm. I was a little miserable some days and this week I feel great. And I just don't even remember that half the time, uh, how I felt yeah. even just last week. And yeah. now I, this week I almost take it, could take it for granted sometimes, but. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. We all get so caught up in our own lives and you forget just the health of us, the health of our loved ones. I mean, what more can we really ask for? Yes. Well, um, can you share with us how we can connect with you and then we'll say goodbye. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so I'm on all social media, primarily Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. I am Tessa Renee T R. So my name and then Renee R E N E E T R Tessa Renee T R. You can find me there. All right. Also, after the show, head over to BehindTheFitness.com. You'll find links to videos to each episode, links to connect with Tessa, and more. Tessa, thank you so much for spending time with us. It was truly powerful. Thank you. Thank you for letting me chat.